everyone, finally doing the end of the year wrap up, even though it's already the next year. Oops. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, so I decided to make my handy dandy little uh, graphic uh, aids, beautiful graphic aids again, because I hung them up on the wall last year and they were really useful for helping keep me on track throughout the year. So we're doing it again. Uh, 2018 was a pretty crazy year. It was my it was full year I worked as a full-time artist, which was kind of crazy and uh, not what I was expecting to be doing in 2018, but it worked out really well. Um, so first, we're going to look at the, the fun numbers um, for my online presence. Uh, this year, there were a lot of algorithm changes that really frustrated me, so um, here, I started in 2017 with 1368 Facebook likes and ended at only 2178. Um, basically, after a few months in Facebook, they changed the algorithms and all my reach and likes just like. So I kind of gave up on it in a lot of senses because I just I can't I can't deal with the algorithm. Um, but it's still kind of heartening to see that I still had a lot of positive growth in 2018, despite everything. Um, Instagram like really went nonsense crazy. I ended up at almost 4,200 when I started at 1,300. Though so, unfortunately in the last few months, Facebook bought Instagram and then they changed the algorithms again. So now we're just not getting anywhere. But you know, hey, it's still growing. That's still a good number. It still, still kind of makes me happy. Um, I also started tra tra tracking the Etsy favorites I have this year because I thought uh, for the longest time I thought I had, oh, I only have like 10 favorites, what's the point of keeping track of that? It doesn't matter. And then I like looked at it a couple months ago and I was like, what? <laughs> 2,000 people? <laughs> Where do these people come from? So and while I unfortunately don't have the numbers for 2016 or 2017, I thought I would make a note of it for 2018 that I ended at 2,200 they have shop favorites on Etsy. I don't, I don't know where they came from. I wish I could interact with these people because they they seem to be like mostly people who are not necessarily on my other social media. So ha, huh, pretty crazy. Um, Etsy orders like really, really nonsensically went up. I had 400 orders last year, which was a lot. That means that was more than an order a day. Uh, and. Um, Black Friday sales, especially uh, a significant amount of that was in the Black Friday sales, and that was a very busy week. Thank you guys so much. That was awesome. Um, convention presents. So, at the beginning of 2018, I thought I was just going to be that person who's at a con every weekend, doing a million things all the time, and then like three months into that, I was like, Let's sleep. <laughs> Very tired. Don't want to do that. Uh, so my convention presence went down, which was planned. Um, I only attended 17 cons in person this year. I did have three pop-ups, which are great. I do want to do more of those. Those are fantastic. Uh, shout out to the Black Ribbon for making two of those pop-ups happen. Heck yeah. Uh, she has a pop-up actually this weekend, uh, which is the weekend of January the 12th, I want to say. So if you're in San Francisco, you should go check out her pop-up. Uh, this is significantly, so with Lolita Collective at five other events that I wasn't at, that ended my year at a convention presence of 20. Last year I did 32. Um, however, I managed, I feel like the quality of the releases I made this year was significantly better. And I think a lot of that had to do with having more downtime from the convention, so I'm, I'm really not unhappy with that. Um, yeah, and uh, as you'll see later, I still managed to accomplish a lot with less conventions, so yay! Uh, and I guess that at eight conventions, which is so many conventions, <laughs> it didn't feel like a lot while I was like there doing them, but going through and counting them and being like, wow, eight conventions in eight different places had me as a guest. That's pretty great. Um, so my revenue goals this year, I I met almost all of my goals, which is pretty great. I didn't have the like 
nonsense boom that I had between 2016 and 2017. But a, a significant reason for that is I did less cons this year. And so the fact that I was still able to grow, no, my sheets. And um, I was still able to grow despite doing less cons is really a big plus for me. So um, my online sales, I beat my goal, which was great. I really want to get more of those online sales since that's like a more reliable income for me. And um, for convention sales, I didn't have a set goal for convention sales because it's kind of, I, I typically have a goal per convention since each convention varies greatly. Um, I did have growth in my sales at conventions, so despite doing only two thirds of the conventions I did last year, which is fantastic, that's super great, that's like, one of the best things about last year. Uh, and I did accomplish one of my goals this year of having a wholesale order um, with Lolita Budikin and 8 Sin, and they're both fantastic. You should check them out, especially if you're in Europe. So, there we go. Just a little bit of total growth up from last year, but given that I did that with so many less cons, like that's amazing. Um, some highlights from 2018. So, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I'm still incredibly proud of the show at Teco that Toshi so kindly agreed to like die on stage for me. Poor, poor Toshi. I was like, hey Toshi, uh, go stand on stage for the entire show. And Toshi was like, all right. <laughs> I put her full effort into it. She did a lot of her pose work to try and make sure that people could still see the models. It was great. Uh, and my models for that show were so great. Thank you guys so much for agreeing to be chased around on stage with the knife. That was excellent. And um, the video for that, I actually got video, which is amazing. And I've been using that video when I'm uh, talking to other conventions to be like, like this is what you can expect from my show. So that was that was amazing. Um, I, the Otakon show with Creepy was also fantastic. I unfortunately didn't get video. And it was, a, it was a smaller scale show than Teco, but, uh, but uh, Creepy went up on stage for me and um, we got to like kill him and resurrect him and then he screamed on stage and I, I, I got a little clip video from a friend who was in the audience who got him screaming, like he screamed on stage and then the whole audience screamed, it was great, <laughs> it was so great, so. Peachy Parade, which I've been wanting to collab with Peachy Parade since like Peachy Parade has existed, so that was a dream come through true. And they like they did such a good job. Um, it was amazing watching them perform, and um, I'd never really done outfits for idols before, so that was a whole new uh, new style of designing for me. It was a lot of fun. These girls are great. Um, I hope I can collab with them again in the future because that was awesome. Um, so one of my goals for the year from last year was to do some international events and I got to do uh, two, which was awesome. I did Hyper Japan in the UK and I did Eternal Twilight where I did actually provide some programming for them. Um, Eternal Twilight was like, oh that was so great. That was one of, I don't know, I don't know how I could top that. That was an amazing event. Um, they, the sales were only one day so I actually had a day to enjoy the convention. I got to actually go to the tea party and they had like food, it was fantastic. They had like this whole, this plate of smoked salmon and I just sat next to the plate like I'm gonna eat all of this, it was awesome. Uh, they had like a after party that was part of the event that was amazing and I drank entirely too much licorice flavored liquor, it was very delicious. Uh, 
I didn't know in Finland it was very difficult to buy liquor in stores. It's very restricted. It really surprised me. I wasn't expecting that because I feel like America's got a lot of weird liquor laws. Um, but yeah, the next year I'm going to try and plan it out so that I can get some of that licorice favorite liquor because it was so delicious. Like, I know a lot of you guys are like, ew, licorice, yeah. no, no, trust me. This was amazing. Yeah! Oh, I got engaged this year. That was, that's not a big deal at all. <laughs> um, that was, that was fun. Weird. Well, it's, it's like weird. I feel, I feel like I'm not old enough to be engaged. But here we are. Yeah. Fun things. Um, and my 2019 goals. So, a lot of these goals are actually rollover from last year. And I, I don't feel bad about not meeting all my goals from last year. Their goals are not like they're supposed to be kind of hard to do. There's something to aim for. Um, I give myself a few easy ones just so that I I don't feel too bad at the end of the year. But so some rollover goals is uh, my website. I still haven't finished that. I started actually started and it's halfway built. So uh, goal is end of the month that should be up and it kind of has to be up for certain reasons. That'll become evident later. Um, I wanted to host my own event, which I haven't quite done that yet, but uh, I, I had a plan for it last year and then kind of partway through planning I realized that the theming I had for it didn't fit with my brand very well or necessarily with um, uh, what I think my fans wanted. So I uh, postponed it till this year to try and retool it in a way that would be more fun. So that, that is the thing to keep your eye out for an announcement on. Um, so I, I'm also starting a new job, which won't start uh, hopefully until after August, which is when my wedding is, um, but we'll see. We have to wait for various, uh, uh, all sorts of things to go through because uh, that's how this sort of job works. So I won't know. Uh, for a while, um, but because of that I'll be doing a significantly smaller number of cons. I'm going to try to keep my regular pace up until July. I, um, I, do, I do need to give myself a break to finish my wedding planning, which <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I'm like insisting on micromanaging everything because I'm just like, well I could just make that. So don't do that. If you're getting married, don't do that. It's very stressful. Uh, so, particularly to the second half of the year, I'm probably only going to have two or three conventions um, in that second half of the year. But hopefully, we'll still, like, so I'm not trying to make more sales this year. I think that'd be very difficult when I'm probably going to go down to, like, 10 or 12 conventions this year. But I'm hoping that I can still make the same amount. Hopefully, some of those people will move over online. That's the goal. Uh, another goal, have a mailing list up. I want to make a Weibo, that was a goal from last year too. I still haven't quite figured that out. I, uh, I need to make a Chinese phone number and, uh, cause I try, it's, you're supposed to be able to do it with an American phone number, but it just was not working. So I have to figure that out still. Um, I would like to do a video lookbook this year and a fashion catalog this year. I wanted to do a fashion catalog forever, but it's one of those things where it's like, it costs a lot. And it's not like, it's like a marketing item and people don't really buy it. And to be fair, like, people who buy my stuff don't really, you know, don't really need one. Um, it's nice, but they don't really need it. I just kind of want it. Because <laughs> I always love looking through, uh, like, bigger brands, fashion catalogs. So hopefully this year I'll make one of those. Um, and this one is more of like a daydream than a goal. But I would love to have a Minhara Art Gallery this year. I don't know if that can happen. That may get pushed. That will probably get pushed to 2020 because it's such a such a hard thing to do. There's not the Minhara community is very spread out. It's not very large, so it's not really a very good place to like have one. And then and it's and when people come, I don't know. But I like to. I met a lot of really cool Minhara artists uh, this year and last year. And it'd be really neat if we could have a little like standard art gallery to showcase all of the different Minerva community art you need. Um, you know, if, if you're someone who who might have a suggestion of where a good place would be to host that, 
Please let me know, because that's, that's something. Um, that's the end of my beautiful, beautiful graphic design uh, is my passion. <laughs> Science. <laughs> um, other than that, it's just like such a such a crazy thing to reflect on the year and everything that's happened and everything that got me <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Um, did a lot of things I didn't expect to do this year that was awesome. Um, met a lot of cool people. So hopefully we'll have an even better and brighter 2019. Yay! Um, and I'm going to be doing a, another video later on um, the changes that will be coming as I start my new job. It's not going to be anything too drastic, but I figured uh, this video would get too long if I went into those details. So I'll do that later. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions you want me to answer, uh, please comment them. If you could comment them or message me them or fill out my survey form and put your question in there and I'll answer that during that video as well. And uh, thank you guys again so much. You guys are the reason why this year was so great. Uh, I really, really love that everybody has been resonating with the Minhara theme so much. I've met so many people at conventions now who just love that there is a fashion for them and hopefully we can bring that fashion and that community to more people in 2019. So until next time, I'll see you later.